Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to show you this new ultralight 1S whoop that I've been working on. For this build, I want to see just how light I could make it, and the results are pretty cool. It currently weighs about 15.3 grams, and as far as I know, that makes it the lightest brushless whoop anywhere in the world today. If you've got one that's lighter, that's awesome. I'd love to see it. But this is what I came up with, and I'm pretty excited about it because weight is super, super important to how these things fly, both for precision and for performance. Now, to put that weight in perspective, most of the bind and fly drones that are this size are somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 grams. So this is 5 to 10 grams lighter than that. Imagine taking one of those builds and removing an amount of weight equal to the weight of the battery and then flying it that way. Um, that's the kind of difference that we're talking about, and you can totally feel it. Um, and as an added bonus, this build turned out to be super efficient. With a battery like this, I can fly it around my house for as much as five and a half minutes. I am using the new Beta FPV 1S brushless flight controller, and you can see that here. This is definitely a key ingredient. It's super light with these carved out corners, um, and it has all the features you'd expect too. It's got a F4, OSD, and the integrated receiver. Uh, this board was sold out for a while, but it's back in stock now, and the new one has a 5 volt regulator, which this one doesn't. So if you want to pick up one of those, check out the link down in the description below. I'll tell you more about this build in just a minute, but first let's look at some flight footage. That's the fun part, and after all, who cares how light it is if you can't have fun with it? Now let's go through the components individually and talk about where all that weight goes. I'm going to start with the flight controller. Without any wires, the flight controller would be 2.7 grams, and with the provided wire, it's 3.3 grams. Now this pigtail has 24 gauge wire the way that it comes. Sometimes I replace those with a larger wire gauge, but I left it as 24 this time because it's nice and light and because I was expecting to build something with very low current requirements. On the end, you can see they have switched to a solid pin version of the PH2 connector, uh, and that's awesome. These connectors are often the weak point on people's builds, so this one is hopefully a lot better. Unfortunately, the heat shrink in the back does make it kind of hard to bend around into place, um, and the cord is a little bit longer than I think it needs to be. My favorite way to do this is to get the uh, 90 degree connectors and then bend them into a 180 degree configuration like this. So the battery slides forward and then back into the connector. That allows you to use a shorter connector uh, and it just works really nicely. <laughs> you may notice there's no black wire in here and that's because I actually removed the shielding from my ground wire. Uh, that was to save a little bit of weight. Turned out it only saved 0.05 grams but these things do add up. Um, and I used the black wire because I wasn't worried about it shorting out. Uh, it hits the USB down here, but the USB is also connected to ground. And I did coat it in conformal coating uh, to make sure it wouldn't touch anything bad. The flight controller does have motor plugs on the bottom, and I removed those, which was definitely the most time-consuming part of this whole build. I first had to pry them up a little bit and then pull them off uh, with little pliers, and then solder and remove all of the pins, and then wick the solder out of the holes so that I could get a nice, clean, through-hole solder connection for all of my motor wires. I also trimmed the motor wires so that they were just long enough to kind of arc like this. You do want to leave a little bit of slack. Uh, this one, you can see the break there, I actually had to extend it because I trimmed that one a little bit too short, so be careful of that. Once it's done though, having the motors direct solder doesn't really cause any problem for maintenance. You can just take the prop off and pull the motor right out through this hole. The whole thing comes out uh, without breaking the frame. And speaking of the frame, I'm using one that looks like this. You can see the triangular point in the bottom 
and the shape of the battery tray down here. Um, now this is an older beta FPV frame. They used to call this version two of the 65 Pro frame. Uh, version three is right here. This is uh, still the current frame. And this is a great frame for general purpose use. It's super, super tough. Um, don't be afraid to use this frame. But it is a tiny bit heavier, and so that's why I chose to go with this one for this build. Uh, if you want to get one of these frames, it's sometimes sold as the BWOOP 65 frame. And I think the UR65 also has this same frame. The companies must have gotten them from the same place because I can't see any differences. Here's the weights of those two frames before any modifications, uh, but then I continued reducing weight. You can see these bits that I pulled off here, and that's coming out of mainly the hoops. You can see right here and here. I just kind of lifted them up to make this rim thinner, um, and you know what? It's still plenty strong. I did leave the cross braces in here uh, to give it strength, uh, but it feels plenty stiff to me, and it is still super durable, mainly because it's so light. The motors are screwed into the frame, as you can see here, three screws per motor. Sometimes people use just two, uh, but I wanted to make sure I got a nice secure connection. But these are not metal screws, as you can see. The material is called Rennie. I think it's a composite of fiberglass and nylon, and that's great because straight nylon screws wouldn't be very strong. The heads would strip when you tighten them, but these are much better. Uh, you do have to be a little bit careful, but I haven't had any problem with them, and I've never had these screws break. You can get it from solidspot.com. Uh, unfortunately, you can't buy just a few of them. You have to buy them in a bag of 100. So you might want to combine with some of your friends and split it, and then it's not so bad. The size you need for this is M1.4, and I'm using four millimeter length. The motor that I'm using in here is actually an older design. Uh, this is an 0603 motor by Racer Star. I chose this motor because it's really lightweight, um, and I chose 16,000 kV because I didn't want to have to use a really big battery. Um, it turned out to be super, super efficient. These motors need hardly any power. Um, so I could have used a higher KV, and next time I think I would do so. The motor comes like this. The wires are pretty long, uh, but there is no connector on the end. So you kind of have to direct solder this one or add your own connector. Uh, but the way that it comes, it is 1.64 grams. It's about 1.5 grams when you trim up the wires. Now let's talk about props. I started out with these HQ props. Uh, they're really light, so I wanted to give them a chance. Now, this is the version with the 1.3 pitch. I had previously tried the version with 1.2 pitch, and honestly, I did not like them. Um, they just didn't deliver enough thrust. You had to use really high RPMs, um, and that pushed the motor into a range that had lower efficiency. Um, this 1.3 pitch version is a little bit better, but it still feels underpowered to me. I think my favorite prop is actually still this old toy prop. Uh, this was the Ishin 010 prop. Beta FPV sells them, Tiny Whoop sells them. A lot of people uh, resell these props. I'm not sure where they came from originally, but they've got a ton of pitch, which is what you need for props in this size. Uh, the problem with this prop is it's actually uh, pretty big. And on this frame, you sometimes start getting a lot of prop strikes. I don't know if you can see the lines in there from the props hitting the frame. Uh, so you don't want to have that, and these props are pretty big. Um, so for this build, the ones that I liked the best were actually these GemFan 31mm 4-blade props. Uh, this is a great prop as well, and it's a better fit for this frame. So the flight footage you saw was actually with this prop. Here you can see the weights of those props. And the last big thing to talk about is the FPV camera and the VTX, which I have underneath. I decided to try out the Beta FPV T01, uh, but I wouldn't really recommend that to you. Um, I don't really like this camera. The FOV is narrow, and it turns to black and white uh, in my basement, which is really annoying. I have to turn on the bright studio lights just to get some color in the video. Uh, but it does fit fantastically right in this little notch of the front of the frame. All you have to do is cut away the front of that nub, and then it fits right in here. When I first did it, it just kind of snapped in here on its own and held that angle, which was fantastic. Now it's getting a little loose, so I'll probably have to add some glue or maybe a little rubber band to just kind of strap that in place. Um, I use a lot of backpack style cameras like the Mobula 7 camera or the uh, Wolf Whoop. WT07, and unfortunately those boards are just a little bit too wide to go in here. Um, I don't think they have to be though. Obviously you can fit everything in this size, so I'm hoping in the future we'll get more cameras in this size. I have a new camera coming from Beta FPV, the M01, so I'll try that out, see if it works any better. Um, the M01 has smart audio also, which is nice. This one does not. 
You can actually see the size of this VTX, even though it's light, it's not really super tiny. I'll bet there's a lighter VTX uh, that you could put in here and save even more weight. The way the T01 comes, it weighs 2.9 grams, but a significant part of that weight is the long wires, connectors, and that long antenna. It came with this dipole antenna, which added uh, about half a gram all by itself. Now, if you race somewhere that requires circular polarized antennas, then you'll have to find one of those, uh, but that's not required around here, and so we use a lot of dipoles, but look how much material is on here with this thick heat shrink tubing, and the back side of the dipole also adds weight. Um, a monopole actually works just fine in my experience, and all you really need for that is a piece of wire. Really, any piece of wire would work, but I used a uh, little antennas like this. This is actually an FR Sky antenna and you can see the inside part. This is the active element and it just has to be trimmed to the right length. Um, and that is uh, 12.922 millimeters or as close as you can make it for 5.8 gigahertz. And you can see mine coming out right here. Again, even just a tiny wire down here would technically do it, uh, but it's harder to tune because you don't know exactly where it starts. Whereas this black part is shielded so you can measure just the end of this uh, pretty precisely. Um, and also it helps to get it out here. So this antenna weighs almost nothing uh, when it's on here instead of half a gram for this. I know people are gonna ask me for the PID tune. That's still a work in progress, but I'm happy to share what I have and I'll put it down in the video description. If you're new to this hobby, then please don't feel like you have to do all the things that I've done to this build. Uh, just get out there and fly. But if you do like to build and tinker, hopefully this has given you some good information and some ideas about how to reduce weight. If you've got your own ideas to share, let's talk about that down in the comments below. And if you want any of these components, of course, I'll leave links to that in the video description. It'd be cool if you could use those. Um, I've been talking to Beta FPV about the importance of weight, and uh, you can see they've come out with this flight controller, and so that's a step in the right direction. And they've got some other stuff that's coming too, so that's exciting. I hope the other companies will follow suit and continue to give us lighter and lighter components into the future. Uh, until next time, happy flying.